And amidst the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict, Israel's Defense Ministry is prepared to receive a major influx of injured soldiers. As per the Israeli Defense Ministry, it states that its rehabilitation department expects to have 20,000 new disabled soldiers. Over 5,500 wounded individuals have been added since October the 7th. In expectation of the huge influx in uh, mentally traumatized soldiers, the rehabilitation wing is augmenting its psychological treatment capabilities with initiatives to give tailor-made support for those struggling with mental health issues. Currently, the rehabilitation wing provides uh, for approximately 62,000 people who were injured while being in service. Right. Well, Israel has been... Uh, waging this war against Hamas for the past uh, few months. Akshit Gupta, my colleague, joins us on the phone line to talk more about this. Akshit, if you can hear me. Yes. Well, you know, where does this put Israel? You know, there's already a very stressed situation. Uh, you know, people, in fact, uh, regular people have been commissioned uh, to come and fight against Hamas. What, what kind of a setback does this prove for uh, the Israeli onslaught on Hamas? Yes, uh, you know, Israel's defense ministry is gearing up to receive a significant <coughs> of injured soldiers as the war in Gaza now has uh, entered its fifth month. And the ministry has also said that uh, its rehabilitation department expects to have 20,000 new disabled soldiers by the end of 2024 uh, and is laying the groundwork for their care and support. Uh, and uh, statistics also reveal that 84% of the injured are classified as light, uh, lightly wounded, while 9% and 7% are considered moderately and severely injured. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, the ministry also said that it's also uh, postponed uh, meetings of the medical committees for one year to allow wounded soldiers and their families to focus ex exclusively uh, on their recovery while receiving benefits. And at least 1,200 people uh, you know, have been killed and 240 Israelis and foreigners were taken hostage in Hamas's attack on uh, Israeli communities uh, near the Gaza border uh, on uh, October 7th. Right. Group Captain UK Devna, defense expert, also joins us on uh, the program. Group Captain Devnath, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Well, you know, the influx of injured soldiers for Israel is obviously uh, something to be dealt with, but that is the cost of war, isn't it? Oh, yes. In any war, uh, any nation has to sacrifice its uh, sons, <coughs> uh, brothers. Uh, in Israel, uh, uh, every citizen grows up, he knows that a day will come when he will have to lay down his life or body or limb in the service of the nation. Uh, they, uh, they grew up knowing fully well that under the Israeli system, uh, every soldier, uh, men, women, has to become a citizen soldier. So, uh, when this uh, war started on 7th of October, um, everyone knew that this time probably Netanyahu will go um, all out uh, chasing Hamas in uh, streets of uh, Gaza. Uh, in fact, when uh, IDF entered Gaza, military specialists and strategists has, uh, had calculated that maybe uh, more than 1,000 uh, Israeli troops uh, will be losing their life over a period of three, four months. But... Uh, Israel has played, uh, Israeli army has fought this war very professionally. They have managed to keep their uh, casualties low. Yes. Hmm. So you said they've managed to keep their casualties low. And this is obviously owing a lot to do with the fact, sir, that uh, their uh, technical prowess as compared to uh, Palestine or Hamas is far superior. But the fact of the matter is that 50% of Hamas has already been eradicated. What could be the short-term and long-term goals uh, that the, you know, the, the Israeli government is perhaps working on now? Israeli government's short-term objective is very clear. The government wants to survive. Netanyahu wants to survive. Uh, it is a wartime government under which uh, even opposition joins the government and helps the uh, Prime Minister for uh, um, uh, winning the war. That is his aim. Uh, he has, Dendanayo uh, has already described winning the war for him will be release of uh, all the hostages one 
and second uh, elimination of hamas as a military force now uh, he has partially achieved both the aim uh, most of the hostages are on the verge of being released uh, last few hostages about 100 uh, 400 six hostages are still under control of hamas probably hamas is hiding them somewhere in some tunnel in uh, um, rafa now uh, as far as elimination of hamas as a military force is concerned he is yet to achieve that um, it was a uh, estimation of uh, mossad that hamas has got about 24 battalions uh, fighting in gaza and uh, today as on date uh, netanyahu and idf claim that they have eliminated 18 battalions of hamas that still leaves a six active battalions of hamas operating in from tunnels and streets of uh, khan yunis to some extent and to a large extent from rafa uh, it will be a, a huge uh, uh, task for idf to enter uh, rafa and do a uh, you know, house to house street to street fight once again as they did in khan yunis as they did it in nad gaza and um, uh, this uh, street to street fighting in uh, rafa is going to be more intense because original population of rafa was 3 lakh and now more than 1.2 lakh uh, refugees are there so uh, uh, population of rafa has swelled by uh, five times so all streets houses open fields are jam packed with refugees under these circumstances if idf enters rafa it is going to be a civilian uh, <coughs> casualties are going to be massive and netanyahu will have to fight huge amount of international pressure as such there is a huge uh, swell of uh, diplomatic and political pressure against netanyahu yes for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon